and 25% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. Back here on Birds 365 after, after that note from BetUS. Thanks to BetUS. Join now by Chris Franklin of NJ.com, the real part, the real, the real good part of the show. Chris, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for being here. Hey guys, thanks yeah, very much for having me on. How you guys doing? Uh doing well. Good to see you, bud. Um, thanks for taking some time uh while we have a little respite, 24 hours before the big um uh, close to training camp. So I want to give you the floor. I've been talking about him. How good has Nicobe D- Dean been over the past week to 10 days? You know, sometimes I think when you look at stuff and you realize you could really lose what you really thought you had locked up, it brings something out in you a little bit more. And he, he looked like he struggled. I know he was dealing with his injury and trying to work his way back there, but there's something else that just seemed like it was all for most of his training camp. And he was getting the fact that you ha- he was mixed in with Zach Bond, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., and everyone on that depth chart. You're like, eh. first you think, like, okay, he's going to start the season. And then it's like, Oh, he's not. He's getting the most for a lot of times to choose. Now you look at him; he looks like I don't know what's if a spark came on or what have you, but he's looked a lot better, a lot better than we've seen more and more he played. I mean, there's been game like I, I know this preseason, though, just the preseason game itself. They like the two best linebackers on the field, especially that Ravens game where ball, uh, not so far, it was Jeremiah Trotter Jr. and Kobe Dean. Just the way they were flowing, they played well together, but. I like the way that he's been the, – the one thing area that he's gotten better, it's still not his strength, but he's gotten better in the coverage aspect. That's the thing I thought he was lacking at that really was holding him behind the other guys, and he's holding his own now. He, and, and you know what? It, it, we, we all know the rules about how they're not supposed to tackle to the ground. He threw that thug. Yeah, and he said he's beating people up out there. He, he's doing like he's, he's trying. It's like he's trying to send a message like, I know I'm not trying to hit you, but I want you to know that I'm here around. Like he's going to run up here. Yeah, a little chest shot. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do it. Wink. And then he goes back up and gets again. But I like what I've seen out of him lately. Yeah. What's been the biggest adjustment, though, Christopher? Everybody says he looks great. <clears throat> is it just confidence? Is it is he fully healthy and he, and he feels it? I mean, what has been the biggest difference from two weeks ago to Kobe Dean to what he did in the last week that's been so great? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's tough to tell. I don't know if it's more of – He's feeling like he knows his system a little bit better and in terms of what's expected, what does he have to do, what does he have to look at? Because that's one thing you see a lot when guys, when you get these new schemes, they're, too, they're thinking, they're looking things through, they're trying to go, okay, it's almost like, okay, like you program it, A, then B, then C, and you see that in their minds, they're going a little slower, especially in the pass, in pass coverage. And now it looks like he's a lot better, like a lot more fluid, a lot more confident in doing that. So a part of it just seems like, I don't know if it was a confidence thing in terms of just looking at, say, <clears throat> He was he had to fight for his job, and he wasn't doing well first. But I think it's a little bit both. Come to think of it, that, that boy. But whatever is working for him lately, he he's to keep it up. Because if that's the case, he, he, and this is the Kobe that we've all expected to see for a while, and he stays healthy, which is the biggest caveat of all, I think he'll be fine with that. Yeah, I think it was a couple weeks ago, and Vic wasn't even talking about uh, the linebackers. I think he was talking about the cornerbacks at the time. He said. It will become obvious who deserves to be out there. I think it's become obvious at linebacker. Maybe you need a little bit more longevity, certainly from a regular season perspective. But, I mean, throughout the rest of the summer, if N'Kobe Dean continues to play like he has over the past week for the rest of the summer, he's got to be a starting linebacker on this team. Yeah, I think that's what the team wants as well, too. When you look at everything else, the last thing they wanted to do is say, hey, our third round pick, the guy who top 100, like top 100 type of guy. Yeah, you know, he's sitting on the sidelines playing special teams now. Almost like you didn't want it to become like a Davion Taylor situation where you get him and you're like, oh, great. Look look at this here. And then he's just sitting there. And next thing you know, he's in the CFL. So you're looking at that and it's like, all right, he, he's played. He's worked his way back into it. And I think that they feel more comfortable with that. I still think it's extremely close competition. Like if he keeps playing it, yeah, do that. The fact that Bond is still in there a lot and middle linebacker, it could be just getting him extra snaps in case there's something that happens to Dean and you have a solid backup plan in terms of that. And then I look at uh, uh, Trot Jr.'s the way he's playing and the way he's really standing out in certain areas, even against someone some tackles as the ones. 
it's you can literally make a case for all four guys to see time. And I think well, that's where point. I was, Chris. At one point, I said this linebacker room. At one point, really, for the first since you know, say August tenth up to August tenth, I said they're interchangeable. You're going to get the same level of play from Devin White and Zach Bond as Nicobe Dean and Jeremiah Trotter. Even throw Ben in there, Ben Ben Sumeran. I think you'll get. It might be a little bit, you know, somebody might have a good day, somebody, might have, but I thought they were all pretty much in the same category. And I thought you could mix and match. And that seemed to be the Eagles stock because they were mixing and matching so much. Um, and I thought you'd, you'd end up with the same level of play. Now I think you got a clear number one and then a bunch of guys who are similar. Um, we'll see if he can close it. Um, again, you got to keep it up. You can't just do it for a week and then go back to what you were. But uh yeah, I I I think there's a clear demarcation line between Nicobe Dean and everybody else when he's playing like this. You you don't seem to be there yet. I mean, you and I'm, I'm, the same category. Yeah, I, 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 uh, there's little there's little aspects of there that I, I see as well too. And then also, it comes situational. I I like I really like him in terms of like the run defense, the run stop, and the way he's blitzing. I really like that too. I see Zach Bond. And I look at the way he, when in terms of the rush ability, because to be honest, when you look at these edge rushers, it, it, besides, I I feel confident enough in Josh Sweat to be able to go ahead and against this run. Bryce Huff, I'm still getting there. Like I see him, you see him one on ones. Like all right, cool. You you see. He's getting better going against some of these guys as well, too. So you're going to need to get a pass rush somewhere because if not, you're going to leave those that secondary. As many guys you added back there, you're going to leave them on islands. So you, so Bond, I think you can add a rush element to that and you can use that in certain packages and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's still – there's still little things I see there. I don't know. You don't want it to be – I can see Vic not wanting to give a tell like, oh, the Kobe Zeal on the, on, on, the, on the field, so we know a blitz is coming or, you know, they feel more comfortable with the run stop. So I, I st there's little things I still want to see them get a little better at, but it could get better. It could, well, if I throw my conspiracy theory, here's my conspiracy theory. Uh -oh. um, we only got three more practices that we can watch in full. Um, when they end and the reporters are kicked out, we get to watch the first, we get in regular season mode, first 20 minutes, no team drills. Then he's making the shift. Then he's making the shift at linebacker to where he's got to be on September 6th. Do you like that conspiracy theory, or should I just I like put it. on the tinfoil hat? No, I like it, because to get the competitive advantage, as we've heard so many yeah. years, the last few years, in order to do that, I can see them doing something like that, like, hey, get the, and even though we're not allowed to record a team, things like during the practices, like, get the guys writing about, like, hey, you know what? Look at the, the personnel package they're using a lot. Like, yeah. what, what, like that and offensively a lot of times too so yeah i could i, I think there's credence to that so yeah it's, it's not it's not it's not tinfoil we don't want to commit you anywhere no you're good well no that sounds <laughs> that sounds viable <laughs> chris i want to ask about the rest of the defense anthony perry drops in five bucks he says we can all thank kenny gainwell for dean's turnaround after embarrassing him in that open practice dean That's said, right. kenny did no embarrass more. yeah and kenny gainwell baby good stuff anthony. by the way i said it on our show if you go back you can look it's archived on youtube kenny was awesome he, he, Allen Iverson, and him in the open field. He yeah, broke he him down. Um, Kenny Gainwell mixtape coming. <laughs> yeah, Kenny's had a very good camp. But, but by the way, what what did you make? Kerr let the cat out of the bag, but I'm not going to mention the names. But there were some two. There were two high profile offensive Eagles players that were very upset in red zone drills yesterday very frustrated to very vocal even to the point of disputing the play calling to put it mildly what'd you make of that just frustration more to oh, it they were they were more frustrated i mean i remember the one that was in front that said that said the f word walk yeah. off the field because they were getting that one too f and five yards chris that's what it was f and yep. five yards yeah, that whole offense was well. Yeah, that whole offense was not happy on it yesterday. It, the defense was that frustrating. It also, and then it comes to a point of you're wondering, 
has the defense seen his routes combination so much now they know what to expect because they go to get some so much. Yeah. yeah. And they, but the way they were they saw it, the way they were acting, they were not happy coming off. And the one the two yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to go dance around like the names without saying it. They were already said it? today on this show, Chris. So you don't oh, need to, you I, know, okay, Kern oh, left it, it, yeah. Who who shouldn't be <laughs> practicing right now? Landon Dickerson, since Kurt let let the cat out of the bag, yeah. I'll say. Yeah. But by the was... way, shouldn't Landon <laughs> Dickerson even be practicing at this point? He's clearly banged up. Why? Why? You know, well, the thing I think it, I think he's been. I think he's an instrumental part of pass protection, and not yeah. just the fact yeah. we're playing, but when it comes to calling it out, because you see how much he, I think he's a good. That he's a good safety blanket for Cam Jurgis and Jalen Hurts in terms of pointing out where the protections are at. Because he's a, a lot of times he's the loudest voice. We hear his voice the most when they're calling out protections, like, yeah, oh, like yeah. saying certain words like that. So I think he need, he's trying to help them out in terms of that. But he, yeah, he's limping around and he's banged up in terms of that. So yeah, I think he really, I think he's staying out there. If it, if Cam was like say his third is even his second year being a full time center. Then I think that he would probably sit out a little bit more, but that was kind of a that for reporter wise, it was like, wow, this is this is interesting to watch. And then you still think like, all right, yeah, there's something else going on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you think do you think it is the latter? Is it is there something else going on? Is there I mean, look, we're talking I'm not John just gave the conspiracy of the show. I'm not gonna go conspiracy theory route, but we are coming off a season where a team was 10 and one and ultimately didn't end the season on a high note. They went one and seven, you know, many have pointed the locker room issues being a part of that, whether that's true or not, could there be something deeper or is it just high testosterone dudes running around in the heat of the summer? You know, things are going to, you're going to have some emotions here and there. I think this offense knows what it's capable of doing. And when you look at the names on this offense, it's capable of building up a lot of <clears throat> numbers. And then when you look at the fact they couldn't even convert, consistently against some of the players that were on the defensive side on that type of side of the ball and they weren't able to like basically score at will at times and their defense just it, that was the best I've seen that defense play all camp the way they were breaking up passes the way they were stuffing the run in certain areas is that was the best they played ever and I think the offense got the hit hit like what the heck is going on why aren't we we're supposed to be a top three unit in in the league this year what the heck's going on to slow it down so yeah, I think it's a combination of things, but I don't, I don't think it's more of a locker room like, yeah, oh, I hate this guy, I hate this one. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, they 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 had about uh, I don't know 150 pass breakups yesterday. What? what, what? <laughs> um, I lost count. It, it was pretty impressive, and even we talk about the linebackers struggling coverage. They all had pass breakups yesterday. It seemed. Um, is that a concern? They really dominated second and third team reps, even more so. Like Jalen was fine. Mm. Nothing explosive. Jalen Hurts, I'm talking about. Nothing, you know, he had the one slot fade to Devontae Smith. I thought, you know, that was probably 20, 25 yards down the field. He had the touchdown to AJ. AJ makes plays every practice because he's AJ. Um, they were fine, weren't great but serviceable second and third team got destroyed, destroyed. Um, <laughs> any depth concerns? I, I think the offensive line has some serious, they, they can't lose more than one person at offensive line that they struggle. I, I got questions about that. I got questions about the wide receivers beyond four. I think it was like, you know, it, I know it was like, yeah, Paris, Paris Campbell finally came back, but John Ross and Johnny Wilson because of protocol that plays a game. So you're saying like guys like Jacob Harris and Austin Watkins Jr. Like they're on the field a lot more than what you typically see the guys you probably use with. But I'm concerned about, I'll, I'll say when it comes to if Pickett has to go on the field and you really need to push the ball down in a two minute situation and you need a touchdown. I'm concerned about him being on there, even with all those other weapons around him, because he settles too much for – he's more comfortable oh, yeah. with the he's 10, a, 15 he's, yards. He's check down, check down Kenny, yeah. 
it's 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 like if you got Sam Bradford and Ty Detmer and you got their best of their genes and mix them together, and then you put the gloves on them. Hey, it's Kenny Pickett. That's what you have on there. It's like it's just it's, and even Tanner McKee, the way he threw the, the interception and the way he threw, he looked off. He, he looked off. Perry Nick, he, he he gave Perry Nickerson his camp highlight, and in terms of that one too. So. Yeah, um, Perry what, Nickerson's been playing for a while. People don't know him. He's been, you yeah, know, six, six years. seven years. Uh, played with Vic in Miami last year. He read that, and he just was off <laughs> to the races, man. Um, yeah, not a good day for Tanner, the Tanner McKee truthers, because he got some. Se- that was with the second team, so the Eagles kind of rewarded him for that preseason performance. And Kenny Pickle was was. <clears throat> I I would say Kenny Pickett was awful yesterday. Bad accuracy issues when he was trying to throw to the outside shoulder it would be to the inside shoulder. And I would say Tanner was a step down from awful. He was bleeping awful. Um, but overall, Chris, I would say I I think compared to the rest of the league, the Eagles have pretty good backup situation. They just, you know, when you have a bad supporting cast, reps are not valuable because you're getting destroyed. Um, Remember, Lane Johnson had a better in day yesterday. So Fred Johnson was already bumped up from the second team to the first team. Then Makai Becton left. um, And luckily it doesn't seem serious. Tyler Steen's already out again with the ankles. So you're down to your third team right guard, Brett Toth, and he's on the first team, and that affects the second team and the third team. So I do think part of it is that, and you mentioned the receivers, and all of a sudden it's Jacob Harris and Austin Watkins instead of Johnny Wilson and and John Ross, which – may not be as different as we all hope, but nonetheless, it's probably a little bit different. <laughs> How much do you, I was talking to a personnel guy this week and he said, and I thought this was brilliant. I've never heard it before. You got to evaluate the reps before you evaluate the player. In other words, if the rep is garbage, rep. <laughs> just a bad snap. I used the Brett Toth example. You can't really evaluate the the player if if the rep is garbage. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, that's true. I think there's yeah, especially. And also, I think you can also evaluate in terms of how the person the person handles it under pressure. Because if say if you have like I, I don't know, going back to a previous camp, say if you had Toth going with Mariota and how Mariota reacted with those snaps, yeah, he was playing and, shortstop, man. He was playing shortstop yeah. before he was playing quarterback. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you, you learn it like okay, you have a vet, you know, you have to compose, and it, can he can somebody make off schedule plays in order to keep the drive alive or keep a play, make it a positive one. So I think there's still little things you can look inside of those games uh, and reps that you can really take away from stuff. I look at yes, yesterday was a game. I, I look like okay, especially when it came to the backup QBs, who can and, and working with what you have. Who can make the best of a bad situation if you find yourself in that in that and you don't have all your full weapons in there? And I'm a little concerned in, in terms of that. Like, I think I, and I, I'm one. I'm one of the tender key truth, truth, truthers more and more now. I see the way it's playing on there. I still think they have a really good backup quarterback situation in terms. Of, I think get actually if somebody came and dangled a pick because out of necessity that you can get away with one. Because if by the way, if if we'll, we see Will Greer at any time, we always know the season's over. They get down to the third quarterback, yeah. so we know that. Well, that's so part I, of the reason why I don't think the Eagles would consider trading either, because they don't want to have Will Greer as their third quarterback. I think you can get somebody pick somebody else like close to the roster. I I I think it, I doubt it's going to happen. But if somebody Minnesota side Matt Corral's not happen, but somebody like in a similar situation with Minnesota where they need a quarterback. And they have a decent shot at making a, a, a wild card per se, and they don't want to make up such fan base. If somebody's like, "Hey, we'll give you a conditional two for one of those guys," I think heavily, seriously think about it. Because I think you're okay with the other one. Well, I w- I would say to that, I I would say to that, Rick Spielman's no longer the GM in Minnesota. <laughs> so, yeah. Qu- Quasi's yeah. not giving up 
second round picks for they don't, they don't even JJ, have <laughs> JJ McCarthy. Yeah, JJ McCarthy's not dead. He's just coming back next year. So they yeah. <laughs> they and plus they're paying Sam Darnold 10 million a year to be the bridge anyway. They're they're not looking for a quarterback. Um they signed Matt Corral to compete with Jaron Hall for quarterback three, which is right. terrible versus terrible. Um, <laughs> but I agree. I think now I, I've softened a little bit on Kenny. I think he has not played well this summer. But I still think the Eagles have a top 10 backup. And I think Tanner McKee is probably a top five third string quarterback in the NFL, which I think there's not a lot of good backups, Chris. No, it's not. It, it really makes me sad because like, I wish my arm was a lot better because that's the case. Probably come yeah, on. Might like, be able to still sling it and go out. I look, I, I, was, watching, more, nope. <laughs> I, 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 I was watching Josh Dobbs last night. San Francisco was on. He's in San yep. Francisco. Now he's like a top five backup in this league and he stinks yep. on ice yep. and he's it's a top scary. five backup. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb. I know everybody likes Tanner McKee and the whole backups, but if somebody's dangling a pick, not that somebody's going to, for either Pickett or McKee, I'm taking the pick. Because if we lose Jalen Hurts, I, I do not think we're going to re recreate the greatness I think he, of the backup. be a playoff team. Yeah, you're no. a playoff team, but you're not You're not reaching. All card, seventh yeah. seed. Yeah, but you can't give up on a season. That's I'm, not, I'm not saying to give up on the season. I'm saying if you get a trade offer for one of those two guys, I don't really care if Tanner or 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 Kenny is the backup. I'll take either one of those. So if one of the other ones gets an offer, I would probably take it. I you know if you get to the third quarterback, I don't care who it is, Will Greer or Tanner McKee. I don't think you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna make it. So that would be my take. Take the asset if you can get it. Right. They value nobody. Nobody knows more about backup quarterbacks than the Eagles. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but but you know that was an anomaly, John. That wasn't. You know, well, it no, is, yeah. but. The point is, if you if you can get if you can get to where the Eagles were in 2017 with Carson Wentz, and you only got to persevere through a short number of games, and you have a really good team, there's more of a chance for that anomaly. Then you're right. If if Jalen Hurts gets hurt in the preseason, and luckily he's not going to play. But if he gets hurt in practice, or if God forbid he gets hurt early in the season, yeah, they're done. They're 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 done. If if you have to play 17 games with a backup quarterback, you tend to get exposed. I go back to Dobbs. Dobbs was phenomenal early with Arizona, if you remember. There's like, wow, Arizona's a lot better. <laughs> He's making some plays. And then the more he had to play, the more he got exposed. Then he went to Minnesota and he was great early. And the more he got, the more he played, the more he got exposed. That's sort of how it works with backup quarterbacks. And I think the same thing would happen with Kenny Pickett. But for short term, if you got Kenny Pickett, Chris Franklin playing with AJ Brown and Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard and Saquon Barkley in that offensive line, he could win games. He won games in Pittsburgh. Why couldn't he if win I, games with that supporting cast? If I only need him for one game, I feel comfortable. If I need him for two, like say if it was like uh, 2022, or even, yeah, 20, say if it was like 2022, and you need him for two games, especially down the stretch, and you're still trying to secure that one seat, I'm relying on the run a lot more, and I know those safeties oh, are yeah. going to come up a lot more. It's going to be, it's gonna be ugly that. football. You have to play, thing. yes, you have to play much differently. It's going to be much more difficult. But he won 14 stinking games with the Pittsburgh Steelers, 14 and 10. Same thing. He wasn't the reason they won games, but they were able to win games. The Eagles have a better supporting cast than they did. So yeah, why can't they fact. figure it out? I was looking at the Steelers' defense at the time, and you hope, you're hoping that, like, like if I put the Steelers defense back even last year, or I'm sorry, the year before that, his rookie season, versus what you saw with this defense here, I still give kind of as like I think that defense bailed them out so many times, and, and that's what led to a lot of those wins because 
it, he he played it safe. He played it, safe, and that's his game. Play it safe, move the ball down like a. He's like a super. Uh, I don't want to say a super game manager, but like a like a game manager plus something like that in terms yeah. of there. So if you need to at least have a chance to win, and if you're a defensive minded team and you had a chance to win, okay, yeah, this is an offensive minded team. Their their goal is to get up early and then have you use those pads, try to use the blitz and Vangio scene to try to basically wear you down and, and make you methodically move the ball out of the field and have, have a time run out there. I don't know if, like, say, if you get behind and you really need to get that drive and really move the ball down the field, even if it's for one game. If you move him down the field, can't he make enough plays? Oh, yeah, I mean, you're, if you're losing by two touchdowns with Kenny Pickett, you're probably cooked. You're um, toast. You got to play. John, you got to play. Burnt toast. Yeah. I'm going to go yeah. as far as to say you're 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 cooked. You definitely have to play a different way. At C Franklin News, make sure you follow Chris on X Twitter. Does a tremendous job at NJ.com. Going to be covering some other teams as well. Going to be doing some Jet stuff, some Giant stuff. So we'll get the full encompassing view of the NFL from Chris Franklin this year. Big Along League Chris Franklin, Johnny Mac. Yeah, That's yeah. my new name for him. Big League Chris yeah. Franklin. Hey, real uh, quick on the blitz. What do you make? <laughs> what do you make on this? Fixed history is a big history. You know, twenty-two percent, twenty-three percent, twenty-one percent, and all of a sudden. He's turned into Brian Flores. Is that because Brian Flores is coming in this week? See, part of me, part of me is like, wants to say like, okay, he wants to practice it and he gets it and give the offense a look to try to block it up to help the to help the offense get used to it. But then I look at the way he's he said, using no, it. He, said, he shot that down yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm shot. I'm, I'm encouraged. I like it. Like I, I still remember what he said before. I'll say. If we there be some court games where we we'll use a lot depending on who we see, and I'm not sure, especially week one, Jordan Love, um, he's borderline at the point where do you want to blitz him or not because of the way he's moved that offense around. We saw at the end of last year, but if it's another quarterback, say if it's Jaden Daniels, what have you, who's still learning the uh, learning the system, oh, maybe yeah, you use it a little bit more. Him, yeah. Yep, yeah. Dak Prescott, maybe you play a lot more cover six, eight, and all that stuff to try to make them hold the ball and try to read what you're trying to do. There's little things, but it's it's not, it's a nice tool to have in the back pocket. And they finally have the linebackers and the personnel to do it and, and do it effectively, you know, just not, and not blitz just to blitz. Good stuff, Chris Franklin. Thanks for joining the show, man. Great uh, insight to the show, as always. We got some birds chirping in the background. We got a beautiful view. We got our man, Chris Frank, and this has been a tremendous segment as always. Chris, thanks for joining the show, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. All right. Thank, thanks, guys. Y'all have a good one now. Uh, thanks, thanks, Chris. Frank, for joining us on Birds 365. Great stuff, Johnny Mac, from Chris yeah, Frank. I, I, I love Chris. Um, yeah, he's the best. Great, great yeah. to bring him on. Uh, John, only a couple minutes left in the show today. I do have a question in the chat that I want to clarify. Um, is Birds 365 going to be staying at this time for the foreseeable future? Saquats, thanks for the question. This is the time for Birds 365. We we are a little bit malleable with it, with the season, with the offseason right now, with the with the training camp practices. Um, <clears throat> so tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week, we are going to have a nightcap edition. So it won't be in the morning. I will still do a show at 8 a.m. It won't be two hours. We will do a show at 8 a.m. It'll be mostly me. I'll try and get John for 10, 15 minutes from the car like normal. Uh, but this is our time for the Birds 365. We are not changing that. Uh, we have no plans to change that. So uh, this is the time. But just like I said, keeping it a little bit malleable based on the practice schedule because we want to make sure we get John. We want to make sure we get all the updates. Um, and they're giving you guys the best updates we can. But appreciate you being here. Appreciate the question, Saquads. And it looks like you just became a member. So we appreciate that as well, Saquads. Thank you, brother, for, for supporting the channel. Uh, means a lot. Thanks for doing uh, that Johnny Mac, any closing thoughts on this um, Monday edition of Birds? Heavy, uh, heavy Nicobe edition. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. John, it's the, we're, we're three weeks into camp, and we're yeah. finally talking about the defense, Johnny Mac. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad I, I keep bringing it up because I'm glad Les brought that up when we had Les Bowen on the show. It's like, yeah, don't just default. I mean. I think people who listen to me and, and watch this show, they recognize I have a lot of respect for Vic Banjo. I like him a lot. He's not perfect. 
And it's okay to push back when you think something's wrong unless brought up Mark Simino versus Jeremiah Trotter Sr. back in the day with Jim Johnson, who everyone reveres. Um, yeah, right. Look, you know, there are mistakes made. Vic will make mistakes. He's not perfect. Um, he He's the one who said it will become obvious um, when you're talking about competition. It's become obvious at linebacker. And... I'm not wavering from that position. Good stuff. I can't wait to see how this all shakes out and what this defense looks like, John. I mean, you know, my fear isn't as much on Vic. Uh, you know, I like Vic. I don't know if, by the way, did you hear, um, speaking of Vic, did you hear, uh, shoot, who was it? I'm blanking on the name now. Who's the iconic pass rush? Khalil Mack, uh, Chicago Bear. Now he's, at, now he's, I believe he's still with the Chargers. Or is he? did he leave the Chargers now? Um, no, he's still, he's still there. He's still Chargers, right? Yeah. So, uh, but he, he spoke on a podcast about his time with Vic Fangio and talked about how much of a mastermind, I think was the word he used, um, that Vic yeah, Fangio well, and how yeah. prepared they were for every single opponent that they faced. And that was a great defense, great defense, great defense. It Akeem really was. Hex and uh, Khalil Mack was the you know, sort of the headliner. Yeah, and he was a beat. I mean, he's still a great player, but when he yeah. was in Chicago, man, he was a menace. Akeem Hicks was the, for years, he was my most underrated defender in football. Um, interior player, just massive guy, unbelievably powerful guy, um, very difficult to block. Yeah, big and and really a San Francisco defenses as well, his Chicago. That's when he really took off his reputation. Um, and yeah, he's he's you know at, at one point there were about 12 teams copying his defense. That tells yeah. you all you need to know. Yeah. Um scale back a little bit. I've talked about it a lot, you know, but he's he's innovative, like he doesn't stand still when he started this thing, this whole philosophy, and it's still the same framework. It was it was mainly quarters coverage, um, and he shifted since since that time. Where now it's more cover three. Um, he calls it cover nine. So he will shift um, quicker than most people, and he'll be the guy. You, know, you always want the guy. You always want the leader. You don't want the follower. For all respect, I mean, the Eagles, and I, I will fight people to the death, and it's insane to me that people think the Eagles didn't have a good defense in 2022 when they went to the Super Bowl, um, especially after watching the defense in 2023, uh, 70 sacks and all that, number one passing defense. I mean, it's all based on the modern game. We're not talking about the 1980s when you could dominate. And that that's about as good as you can play defensively in the modern era. Just kind of faltered in the biggest spot. But I do think people forget they were in the biggest spot Yeah, uh, to falter. Uh, and that's an accomplishment. But while I say that, you know, Vic is the leader. He's not the follower. Everybody else was copying him. Now you have. The original, not the Xerox copy. And that there's a degradation to every copy. Now you have the original. It's so like whisper down the lane, Johnny Mac, when you're a kid. Yeah. <laughs> By the eighth, yeah. tenth person, it was a completely different uh, thing. They were whispering. So now you got the original message. You got the original guy, the original defense. So I think it's going to be good stuff. Uh, John, great show today. Before we get out of here, guys, we're at 144 likes. I need six likes before I get out of here, everybody. Come on, hit me with those six likes. Let's get up to 150. Support the show if you enjoyed the content today. I thought we had a great show. I thought Jeff Kerr was great today. I thought Chris Franklin was great today. I thought John McMullen was great today. I thought N'Kobe Dean was great this weekend, and we talked about them all today. So good stuff. We're up over 150 likes, so that we got the six. Uh, looks like we got seven of them. So thanks, all you guys, for the likes. Johnny Mac, great show today, man. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning briefly, and then we'll have our full show after 
after the practice tomorrow, after Big Sill Show. So that'll be a 6 to 8 p.m. show tomorrow. Remember that, everybody. Uh, good stuff today, Johnny Mac. I'll talk to you tomorrow, right, man? All right, sounds good. Thanks for listening, everybody. All right, everybody. We'll catch you tomorrow. Appreciate all you guys. Hit that like button on your way out. Uh, see you next time on Birds 365. You've been listening to Birds 365.